another day, another recap. Today we'll be diving into an action sci-fi movie that goes by the name 2012. Without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the recap. This movie kicks off showing us the sun and the power it has. In 2009, geologist Dr. Adrian Helmsley visits India to meet astrophysicist Satnam Sarutani. Sharing his readings about solar eruptions, Satnam informs Adrian that not only are they getting progressively bigger leading to a rise in neutrino counts, but the neutrinos which have always been known to be harmless are now causing a physical reaction. Refusing to believe that neutrinos are causing trouble, Adrian is then taken to an internal water tank. The boiling water in the tank proves that the neutrinos have somehow evolved and are heating the Earth's core by mimicking microwaves. Armed with this knowledge, Adrian makes his way back to the United States and speaks to the Chief of Staff of the White House, Carl Anheuser, at a fundraising event in Washington. Initially refusing to even hear him out, Mr. Anheuser is then compelled to read Adrian's report. Going through it and finally realizing its importance, Mr. Anheuser appoints Adrian as the Chief Science Advisor to the President. Six months later in 2010, President Thomas Wilson attends the G8 summit and speaks privately with the other heads of state to announce the findings of Adrian's reports concluding that the world is indeed on the way to its end. Following this discussion, a valley in Tibet is evacuated including a Buddhist monk Nima and his grandparents while his brother Tenzin joins a construction project in the valley. Through 2011, the select rich across the globe participate in a private funding with tickets being sold for 1 billion euros per person. As an Arab royal considers the offer for his entire family, Laura an art expert and President Wilson's daughter, undersees the switching of the Mona Lisa at the Louvre with a fake one to safeguard the original in a Swiss bunker. In 2012 the news begins reporting the end of the world in December as predicted by the Mayan calendar. Amidst these reports, Jackson Curtis, a science fiction writer in Los Angeles wakes up and realizes that he's late to pick up his kids up from Kate, his former wife. His car refuses to start and he decides to take the limousine he chauffeurs a Russian billionaire with instead. In his rush he fails to notice the appearance of a massive crack in the ground that has left several people shocked. Kate and the children Noah and Lily live across town with Kate's new partner Gordon, picking the kids up instead. With that, Jackson grabs his children then heads off to their camping trip. Meanwhile a cruise liner docked in San Francisco with jazz duo Harry and Tony getting on board experiences the larger consequences of a surface crack and momentarily loses balance. Late that night Laura receives a call from the head of the Louvre informing her that the real Mona Lisa was not in a Swiss bunker as they had agreed to. Suddenly boom. The phone ends with a car bomb killing the man. Meanwhile Jackson and his limousine make it to Yellowstone National Park, unaware of the troubling surface cracks. The next morning at the White House, Adrian is discussing with the President whether their plans would need to be expedited when he is interrupted by Laura. Speaking privately the President tells her about Operation Jolene and explains that 46 nations are involved in their survival efforts in the face of a major catastrophic event. Outside, Adrian prepares to leave for Yellowstone to gather further information. Meanwhile, Jackson leads his kids through Yellowstone for their camping and they jump over a fenced-off area to get to the lake. Seeing the lake dried up they get closer to investigate and remain completely unaware of being spied on by conspiracy theorist and radio show host Charlie Frost. Found in a restricted area, Jackson and the children are taken away by U.S. Army personnel to their base at Yellowstone. Having arrived there, Adrian gains information about the exponential rate of rising temperature and asks to get in touch with Satnam. When told about tourists being arrested at the lake, he goes over to meet Jackson and explains that the entire area might be unstable. Recognizing Jackson by his book, Adrian lets him know that he enjoys his writing, requesting the army to escort them back to the campgrounds. Adrian then gets back to work. Delivering terrible news over video call, Satnam says that similar temperature data from multiple places has led him to conclude that the Earth's crust is destabilizing. Despite knowing that this day would arrive, Adrian is shocked that it has come too early. Making up his mind he asks Satnam to pack up his things and be ready to be airlifted from New Delhi with his family. Back at the campground, Charlie meets Jackson and laughs when told that the area is believed to be unstable. Later that evening, Adrian calls Mr. Anheuser to inform him about having to start the evacuation process. Meanwhile, Jackson spots Charlie broadcasting his radio show and goes over out of curiosity. Charlie informs Jackson of the apocalypse and also tells him about the displacement of the Earth's crust due to rising temperatures. When Jackson wonders how such an important matter could stay hidden, Charlie shows him several articles about the fate of the people who tried to tell the world about it. Among such people who lost their lives, Jackson recognizes a professor who had helped him with research for his book. Charlie adds that he had received a map from the professor about the government building spaceships for safety. At this Jackson loses interest and leaves Charlie's van even as he yells that only the rich have any hope to survive. Meanwhile Kate and Gordon are at the supermarket when yet another massive surface crack hits. The next morning Jackson and the kids catch the news at the store in Yellowstone when Kate calls Noah and asks them to return home. At the White House, Mr. Anheuser reports to the President that while they can get only four arcs to be operational in time, they would still be saving more than 400,000 people. 
In an urgent meeting with the representatives of the nations involved with Operation Jolene, Adrian speaks about how the crust of the Earth is disintegrating and have two or three days to save themselves. In Vegas, Jackson's boss, Yuri Karpov, and his partner Tamara attend a boxing match, during which he gets notified about the start of boarding responding to which he immediately walks away from the match. Early the next morning, Jackson drops Noah and Lily at home with Kate and heads over to pick up Yuri's children, Alec and Oleg. When he drops them at their private jet, the kids let slip that they are going on a big ship. Finally grasping reality, Jackson rushes over to one of the hangars and offers his expensive watch to rent a plane. Rushing through the streets in the limousine he then calls and urges Kate to get ready to leave, but she dismisses him by saying that everything is fine. Ironically, just as the governor declares the city is safe on the news, they are hit with an earthquake. Jackson reaches Kate's place in a while and gets everyone safely out of the house and in the limousine. As he drives away, the street continues to be taken apart even as houses are destroyed everywhere. Maniacally driving through the mess and narrowly avoiding falling bridges, buildings, and cars, Jackson stays determined to get his family to safety. Meanwhile, Adrian gets reports of entire cities being wiped out due to the destabilizing of the Pacific Plate. Jackson finally reaches the airport only to find that the pilot has lost his life. When Kate mentions Gordon's flying lessons, Jackson appoints him their pilot instead. Even as the runway rapidly disintegrates, he gets them in the air just in time. They fly through the end of their city as the rapidly forming deep canyon quickly swallows everything. Though inexperience adds to Gordon's troubles, he continues to successfully maneuver through crashing buildings. Once they are relatively safe above the chaos, Jackson tells Kate and Gordon about Charlie and the apocalypse. Meanwhile, on board the cruise liner in the middle of the ocean, Harry gets a call from his son Adrian, with news of the evacuation of the White House making for an emotional goodbye. In the meantime, Gordon lands at Yellowstone for fuel as Jackson rushes to find Charlie with Lily. Getting to Charlie's camper van and not finding him there, Jackson drives the van to look for him. When Lily spots him on top of a mountain, Jackson leaves her in the van and rushes over to ask for the map. Charlie immediately tells him exactly where to find the professor's map in his van and they notice that Lily has joined them as well. Just then, the ground in the surrounding areas begins to explode and Charlie announces his wish to stay and watch the end. Jackson hurriedly gets in the van with Lily and drives back towards their plane even as multiple volcanic eruptions are initiated, leading to one massive explosion. While Kate and Gordon watch the explosion from afar, Charlie is thrown back on impact but he continues to broadcast till he cannot anymore. Jackson continues to drive even when the back of the van is eventually hit and stops only after crossing over to where Kate and Gordon wait with Noah. Handing Lily over to Kate, Jackson goes back into the van to locate the map. Just as he finds it, the van begins to go under, leaving Kate and the others to helplessly watch. Jackson then resurfaces and begins running and at the last possible moment enters the plane which takes off. Trying to outrun the volcano and its ash cloud, he urges the plane to go as fast as it can and eventually gets them to safety. Finally checking Charlie's map, Jackson realizes that they would need a bigger plane to get to China. At the White House, Adrian and Mr. Anheuser catch the news reports of multiple tremors across South America leading to complete destruction. Seeing global unrest in the face of not having any information about the crisis, Adrian tries to get Mr. Anheuser's permission for public announcements but is told to follow procedure and make the information available only after the process of boarding the ARCs is complete. Meanwhile, Gordon lands the plane at the airport in Vegas. Speaking to the president in private later, Adrian learns of his wish to not join them on the ARCs in China and instead stay back to address the nation. He then gets on the plane and relays it to Mr. Anheuser and the other staff. As the plane prepares to take off, President Wilson calls Laura and apologizes to her for choosing the people of the country. After this call, he speaks to the nation with the live broadcast being watched by everyone across the country before it is cut off. Spotting Yuri stranded with his family at the airport in Vegas, Jackson requests him to let his family join them. He initially refuses but has to agree when his pilot Sasha informs him that he needs a co-pilot. Volunteering Gordon for the task, Jackson and the group join Yuri's family and successfully take off despite not being cleared to fly. In the Himalayas, Nima seeks guidance from his mentor following news from Tenzin about working on building the ships. To make a wise choice regarding his future, he is advised to empty himself of all opinions and beliefs. Nima then rushes home to tell his grandparents to get ready to join Tenzin on one of the ships. Planning to stop at Hawaii for fuel, Gordon and Sasha are in for a shock when they see the entire place on fire. With the fuel they have, Sasha reckons they may have to end up landing in the South China Sea. Meanwhile, Adrian checks in on Laura and finds her ridden with guilt over her privilege having allowed her to live. He argues that this might not be the case by mentioning Jackson's book. He says that because he was reading that book the story will continue to live even if the author does not make it into the new world due to lack of privilege. Aboard the cruise liner, Tony decides that it is time to make amends with his son in the face of impending doom. While he gets to speak to his granddaughter, it turns out that he is too late to speak to his son as a massive earthquake hits Tokyo just then. 
A similar fate befalls the White House soon after. While various religious conventions across the world pray for a miracle, there seems to be no hope, as nothing stands in the way of global destruction. The aftereffects of the quakes are felt in the sea as well with a tsunami toppling Harry and Tony's cruise liner. On the other side of the world, a tsunami takes out the White House including President Wilson. Eventually, all communication systems are lost and Adrian sees that the poles of the Earth have reversed their magnetic fields as well. Meanwhile, Sasha informs everyone of a partial engine failure. As they prepare for a bumpy landing it is then seen that the displacement of the Earth's crust has worked in their favor, since it has brought them closer to their destination than they initially thought. However, after complete engine failure, Sasha is forced to land immediately. Following through on his plan everyone gets into one of Yuri's cars on the plane with Gordon joining them after being urged to leave. While the group exits the plane and escapes safely, Sasha goes down with the plane as it goes over a cliff, spotting helicopters of the Chinese Air Force transporting various animals to safety, the others get their attention for help. The only people with boarding passes to get on the arcs, Yuri and his children are offered a ride there. When Tamara tries to join them, Yuri mentions knowing about her affair with Sasha which is why he did not get her a ticket. Meanwhile, Adrian, Laura and Mr. Anheuser reach the arcs and are informed about the possibility of losing an arc because of damage to its roof. While the Americans are assigned the fourth arc, they are told that the third arc has been damaged. As it so happens, this is the arc assigned to Yuri and his family, and with its delayed boarding, they find themselves part of a crowd with no special treatment. Elsewhere in the valley, Jackson and the rest of the group come across Nima and his grandparents as they head to the arcs. While boarding, Laura and Adrian finally realize that tickets were simply sold to the rich and that not even the workers who built the arcs were allowed passage. Back in India, Satnam and his family make their way through a large evacuating crowd. Facing a tsunami he places a call to Adrian and informs him that the airlift never came for them and bids him goodbye. With Satnam's information about a new wave, Adrian's team does the calculations for when it will reach them. Where they had a bit above two hours before, they now are staring at a tragic 28 minutes. Following the updated calculations, Mr. Anheuser speaks to the heads of state in the other arcs and urges them to launch immediately. Lima in the meantime reaches the arcs with everyone and his grandmother urges Tenzin to save all of them. Meanwhile, desperate times call for Yuri to resort to violence and then lead the crowd to the other arcs, even as they prepare for launch. Tenzin hurries everyone along to safely stow away in the zoological bay of the fourth arc, and Tamara makes it in at the last moment after saving her dog. Witnessing the chaos outside the arcs, Adrian overrides Mr. Anheuser and speaks to the other arcs to remind them that their objective is to save humanity. He says that everyone who helped and worked on this operation beginning from Satnam would have lost their lives for nothing if the first step of humanity in the new world was tainted with the blood of numerous innocents. To support his statement, Laura then adds that President Wilson would also have opened the gates and taken in all the extra people. With less than 15 minutes to go, humanity wins when the other arcs agree to open their gates and the captain of the fourth arc agrees as well. However, the reopening of the gate of the fourth arc spells danger for Yuri and his sons as well as for Jackson's group. Tenzin and Gordon lose their footing and hang but problematically, Gordon falls and is crushed by the Ark's mechanism. Yuri then realizes that he and his sons were standing exactly where the open gate would rest and attempt to get up. Meanwhile, Tenzin's impact driver gets stuck in the hydraulics mechanism of the gate of the fourth Ark resulting in the gate not opening fully, but with just about four minutes to go the people waiting outside board the Ark despite everything. When Mr. Anheuser orders the gate to be closed, Yuri manages to push his sons onto the gate and onboard the fourth Ark while he unfortunately falls to his end. Because of the lodged impact driver, the gate of the fourth arc isn't able to fully close. Unable to start the engine without a closed gate, the crew looks for the issue and spots Jackson with the others in the zoological bay. Adrian recognizes them, and with just another minute to go, he leaves for the hydraulics chamber, even as the tsunami ravages everything to reach the arcs. When the countdown runs out, all the arcs feel the heavy impact of the tsunami and the fourth arc quickly gets flooded because of its partially open gate. While Jackson pulls an injured Tenzin up, the group gets separated as emergency barriers are activated. Tamara manages to get Lily to safety while she herself gets trapped between two watertight doors. With the tsunami bringing in debris from everywhere, the fourth arc sets sail on impact without being able to start its engine. Adrian and Laura reach Lily and they speak to Jackson and Kate on the other end. Meanwhile headed straight for Mount Everest, the fourth arc is set to collapse on impact if it is not able to start its engine on time. With Tenzin's impact driver lodged in the hydraulics, getting it out is the only way the occupants of the fourth arc can survive. Jackson volunteers to give it a try despite the area being completely flooded, however it is already too late for Tamara as she drowns in the middle chamber. Seeing the group busy tending to Tenzin's injury, Noah grabs the chance to slip away to help his father. With Mount Everest merely 400 meters away now, Noah spots the end of the cable and points it out. He holds up the torch for Jackson who gets the cable loose and grabs the impact driver just in time. With the gate completely shut, the crew is then finally able to start the engine. The arc still goes on to hit Mount Everest but reverses out of its way soon after, thereby filling the command center with relief even as Noah makes it back safely on his own. 
The whole arc waits with bated breath for news about Jackson and cheers when he makes it back as well, and Mr. Anheuser observes humanity at its best all around him. 27 days later and still aboard the Ark, Laura is now good friends with Adrian. For the first time since setting sail, the sky has cleared enough for the decks of the Ark to be opened. Everyone gathers to catch their first glimpse of the new world and both Jackson and Kate watch it together. With the other two Arks also having joined the course, it is indeed a new beginning for everyone. At the command center, Adrian learns that the water is fortunately receding rapidly, and the captain informs him that all the Arks have set their course for the Cape of Good Hope towards a new hope, a new beginning, and a new home. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this recap make sure to drop a like and I'll see you on the next one.